welcome to this short little video on doing some simple categorical analysis using SAS. At times we may be faced with examining the relationship between two categorical variables. The relationship, not the variables themselves. In such case, we'd want to do a chi-squared test of independence. At other times, we're looking at one categorical variable with more than two possible outcomes. And we want to hypothesize something about the relationship of those outcomes. In those cases, we'd use the chi-squared goodness fit test. So we're going to start with the chi-squared goodness of fit test, then we'll move on to the chi-squared test of independence. Well, technically, first thing we're going to do is start up SAS and load in our data. It's going to be the usual stat grades data. We are going to need to use the dichotomous variable, so we're going to use got pass. It's going to be defined as whether or not the student's grade was greater than 70. Also, we're going to be dealing with the college variable, so we need to recode that student who was lasso into other. And let's proc print it just to make sure we did it correctly. It looks like everything's working. Got passes there, college. We're all good to go. And so the next, next thing to do, as always, is to learn about your data, to see your data, to plot your data. So we're going to look at gender. So the next question here is gender, gender across the colleges. Um, this would be an interesting question. Somebody, somebody may hypothesize that certain genders prefer different colleges over others. So to do this, we'll do a PROC G chart. It's going to be a horizontal bar plot of gender. We're going to group it by college. And we're going to put spaces between the college groups of size 5. Run those, and here's what we get. It looks like, overall, there's not much difference between males and females in each of the colleges. There could be, but it doesn't look like there is much of a significant difference. Looks like maybe males over females in College of Business, and maybe females over males in Ar uh, Kasner, but I'm not exactly sure that those differences are statistically significant. To test if the distribution of genders across the different colleges is equal, we use a chi-squared test of independence, which will be part three. But on the way there, we can go ahead and look at the distribution of the colleges. Perhaps we want to look at the distribution of the genders, hypothesize about those. So let's look at the distribution of the colleges now. Since we're looking at the distribution of the colleges, we're not grouping by anything at this point. That's That'll be the code. Looks like Arts and Sciences has a lot of students, which doesn't really surprise us because in most colleges, uh, mo most universities, the College of Arts and Sciences is the most populous. But we could test the null hypothesis that the proportion of students in business is equal to the proportion of students in arts and sciences is equal to the proportion of students in Kastner is equal to the proportion of students in education is equal to the proportion of students in others. That is, a student is equally likely to choose any of those five colleges or groupings of colleges. Since we're testing if the student is equally likely on this one categorical variable we're going to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. And it's a proc freak because we're dealing with the categorical variable. Tables, college, we saw this back in 1A. The new thing is slash chi-sk, which stands for chi-squared. And that tells SAS that you want to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. It knows it's a chi-squared test because you told it chi-square. It knows it's a goodness of fit test because it is a single variable. Since we specify nothing beyond the chi then it's going to, by default, test equal probabilities. We'll run this. We get this output. First table gives us the raw frequencies, the percents. The second gives us the result of the hypothesis test. This is a chi-square test for equal proportions. P-value is less than alpha, therefore we reject the null hypothesis of equal proportions. Test statistic is 86, degrees of freedom is 4, because there were 5 groups. This graph shows the deviations from equal probabilities. Arts and Sciences, very, very large deviation 
positive, that is, they have many, many more students than they would if the null hypothesis were true, and the other four colleges have fewer if the null hypothesis were true. But because p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis and conclude that the colleges do not have students in equal proportions. It doesn't surprise us. Arts and Sciences tends to have six times the students of any other college in most universities. So to test that, let's hypothesize that Arts and Sciences does have six times more students than any other college. Still proc freak, still tables of college, still KISC, but the new part we're adding in is this. The testing proportions is 0.1 or 10 percent, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. These have to add up to 1. The order is based on the table business first, arts and sciences second, Kasner followed by Ed, followed by other. So we're hypothesizing business is 10 percent, arts and sciences is 60, Kasner is 60, Ed is 60, other is, uh, I'm sorry, 10 percent, 10 percent, and other is 10 percent. And we would make this null hypothesis just by from our experience that arts and sciences tends to have six times the students as any other college. We're running it. We're running it if I push the right button. There we go. Frequency distribution, chi squared test, test for the specified proportions. The test percent is given up here, 10%, 60%, 10, 10, 10. The p-value is greater than alpha. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. This distribution of, of percents is reasonable, given our data. Notice I did not say this is the correct proportion distribution, only that this distribution is reasonable, given our data. And while it may look like business has a very large deviation, compared to what we had under arts and sciences, arts and sciences was off by 2 on this relative deviation, and these business is only off by 0.3. So it's off by even less than 1 sixth. This model is a much better fit. These proportions, these hypothesized proportions, fit the data much better than did the equal proportions. Again, I have to emphasize, we are not saying that these proportions are the correct proportions. We're saying that they're reasonable given our data. Statistics is usually about what is likely, not what is possible. Think about that for a moment. Let's move on to tests of independence. Tests of independence happen between two variables. Let's go ahead and look at gender versus college. I'll create a nice little cross tabulation. It's going to be a proc freak. Tables, notice there's no slash or anything after it because we just want those cross tabulations. Here's the cross tabulation. Refer to 1a as to how to read these numbers. Now, to test if those two categorical variables are independent, what do you think we're going to do? Yes, we're going to add on that slash and KISC. This gave us a cross tabulation up here. This gives us the test for independence. Notice the only difference is the slash and the KISC. Here's the cross tabulation again. Here, the, here is the results for the test of independence between the two variables. The one I want you to pay attention to is the chi squared test statistic. The value is 4.2674. In class, we saw how to calculate that. 
the p-value is 0 0.3710. Because p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We cannot conclude that there is a relationship between these two categorical variables. Another way of saying that is we cannot conclude that different genders choose the different colleges at different rates. That the proportion of males to females in arts and sciences is not significantly different than the proportion of males to females in business or in CASNR or in education or in the other group. We don't have evidence that females choose one over the other or males avoid one over the other. Another way of thinking of this is if I ask you to predict somebody's college, I'm just telling you this is a college student, your prediction would most likely be College of Arts and Sciences. 57% of our sample chose Arts and Sciences. And now I say, okay, given that the person is female, what's the most likely? Given that the student is female, well, we just showed that given that additional information gives us no new information in terms of predicting college. It's just as useful for predicting college as the number of toes on the left foot. The two variables are independent. Okay, what may be interesting, or more interesting, is not gender versus college, but remember this is classroom. These are students in the, my class, and we can also look at whether or not col uh, students pass at a different rate in different colleges. So instead of gender by college, I've got got pass by college. Here's the cross tabulation. Chi squared test good, uh, is uh, 0 0.0053. P is less than alpha. Reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, these two categorical variables are not independent. They are not independent, which means that the pass rate differs across the colleges. The pass rate differs across the colleges. Or technically, at least one college has a pass rate that differs from the others. That really doesn't surprise us. If we look at the cross tabulation, almost 77% of the business students failed to pass. Almost 70% of the arts and science students passed. 91% almost of Kasner students passed. So just by looking at the cross tabulation, it doesn't surprise us to that we're going to conclude that there's a differential pass rate. Not at all. Kind of makes you think, why do business students pass at a much lower rate than the other colleges? Hmm. That's a question for science, not statistics. For statistics, we just said there's that differential pass rate. Science needs to come along and explain why. And that's the end. In this, we loaded the data, we looked at the data, and we performed a chi-squared test of goodness of fit and a chi-squared test of independence. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself. Bye.